Katrina Balf talks Outlander fans and how Sam Hewen is her total opposite. Katrina Balf grew up in a tiny village in Ireland and took off for Paris at age 19 when she was signed to a modeling contract. That was years before she became known to TV fans as Claire Fraser, the time-traveling heroine of Outlander, the star's show based on Diana Gabaldon's popular series of books, which begins its fourth season on November 4. The 39-year-old actress, who is newly engaged to Irish music producer Tony McGill and working on a new movie about car racing in the 1960s, Ford v. Ferrari, recently talked to Parade about avid fans and growing up a ballsy girl. What were Sundays like growing up in Ireland? Sundays always started with my mom bribing us, Balf, her three brothers and three sisters, to get out of bed. She makes the most incredible homemade brown bread and scones. She'd bring us up tea or coffee and scones and then we would be dragged out of the house to go to mass. And afterward, we'd have a big noisy lunch and then everyone retreats to their corners. There was always a lot of reading, or if TV was on, I'd watch Formula One racing with my dad. It was always quite a noisy, big family day because everyone was in the house. In your house. The girls outnumbered the boys. Yes, and in more than just numbers. My sisters are all quite strong. Ballsy is another word. I think the boys just did what they could to survive. What's a typical Sunday like for you now? I'm a big brunch person, so I drag myself up, then find the best brunch place close by. I love to get the newspaper and sit around and read. If I can get a walk in. That's always really nice. Sundays are supposed to be a guilt-free day where you can just relax, but usually there's a little bit of homework to be done, especially if we're filming Monday. If it's winter time, you turn the fire on and put on a good movie before bed or cook a nice meal. Sometimes I'll spend a few hours prepping some food for the next few days as well. It's nice to put on some music and spend some time just puttering around the house. What is your favorite thing about your Outlander character? Claire, her empathy and her ability to connect with people and understand the difference of right and wrong and where justice should be. That's all of the stuff I love about her. And her capacity for loving and living and even fighting so immensely. She has such an immense capacity for feeling, and that's such an incredible thing to be able to play. You get to really go for those big emotions and express yourself quite strongly. Playing her has given me a lot of confidence and strength that I don't think I had five years ago. As a healer, then a doctor, Claire sees a lot of grisly things. How do you react to the sight of blood? People always ask, are you squeamish? And I'm like, well, no, because, on the show, I see that it's like sticky, sweet red stuff, and it's not real, and nobody's life is at stake. But when we do get the opportunity to do certain things, like in season 3 when I got to do that operation in the hospital, I loved that. It's just so interesting. We had real nurses who assist in operations in the scene. The head nurse would say, no, that's not the way the instruments would be laid out, and that's not the way you handle this. She was being quite bossy and it was fascinating. How are you like Claire? You filter a character through your own experiences, so in many ways you bring a lot of yourself. As much as I can try and imagine other ways of approaching something, it will always be colored with my experience or my understanding. I think at the end of the day, parts of you start to bleed through. I would like to think I'm not quite as stubborn and strong-willed as Claire, although Sam and other people who know me very well would maybe agree to differ with me on that. Are you good friends with Sam Hewen, who plays your soul mate, Jamie Fraser? We made a decision before we ever started filming. When he and I were both down in London getting our hair destroyed, we went for a walk, me with a poodle perm and he with some iteration of ginger on his head. We were just talking about it and we were like, who knows what this is going to be. We hadn't filmed anything yet. But we both said, we've got to have each other's backs. If we don't support each other, who knows what kind of mess this could be. And we've done that from day one. We're each other's biggest supporters. He's always there if I ever need to talk or if I'm stressed out about something, and vice versa. We have very similar personality traits in some ways, but then also we handle things very differently. How so? I'm much more bullish, and he kind of calms me down if I'm getting too frustrated about things. And he can be maybe a little passive, so sometimes I'll just give him a nudge when he needs to stand up for something. And it works really well. How about all of those avid fans? Outlander fans are intense and super passionate. I had never experienced anything like this before. For example, 
I was at the Golden Globes this year, and every single person that I talked to said, did you see your fans? Did you see that group? It's amazing. They show up for our charities and they're so generous with their time, with their money, with their enthusiasm and their support. It's amazing. I think it's very rare that you get to become part of a community like this. There was such a huge fan base for Diana Gabaldon's books. We were so lucky that they accepted us and that they were happy with what we were doing. We have a lot to thank them for. Have the fans accepted that you and Sam are not a couple in real life? There's a small vocal group that really wanted it, which is just a testament to the characters that we portray, that the love story is so inspiring and so aspirational that people just really wanted to believe in it. And that's nice thing. But I think things are pretty clear now that I'm engaged to someone else. Everyone gets it now. What's the scoop on your new film? The working title is Ford v. Ferrari. It's about the rivalry between Ford and Ferrari for Le Mans between 1963 and 1966. I play Molly, the wife of Ken Miles, who helped the famous driver mechanic Carol Shelby build the Cobra car. It's a very cool film about the consequences for family when you live in the life and death world of car racing. When you got the opportunity to audition for the part of Claire, had you read any of the books in the Outlander series? No. But when I found out I was going to test with Sam, Huen, and meet with the producers, I called Book Soup, this fantastic bookstore in West Hollywood, and said, Do you have this book? They had one copy left, so I said, Hold on to it with your life, I'm coming round in five minutes. So I was paying for the book, and the guy at the counter said, Oh, you know, they're about to make a TV series of this. And I was like, Oh, really? He said, yeah, screenwriter producer, Ron D. Moore's doing it. I did my thesis on him in college. It was a good omen. I plowed through the book in three days, and then when I met Ron and then with Sam, I was able to say, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I know what this role would be. I think that probably worked in my favor. Had you spent time in Scotland before filming Outlander on location there? I had. A little. Two of my best friends growing up had lived in Edinburgh and Glasgow. I'd been there to visit a few times, but I hadn't really left either Edinburgh or Glasgow, so I hadn't spent any time in the countryside, which obviously now I've spent quite a lot. I hadn't lived back in the UK or Ireland in such a long time. I'd been in America for about 13 years, so it was definitely part of the allure of Outlander to be able to go back somewhere that was very close to home and similar to home, but maybe not quite home. And it did feel like that when I went back. I guess your soul in some ways recognizes parts of the world or things that just reminded me of my childhood and that I'd grown up with. Obviously, Scotland and Ireland are so similar. So that felt really nourishing, I suppose, when I went back in the beginning, that I was reconnecting with my younger self and all of that, which was really nice. Scotland and Ireland, has such a romantic appeal. Yes, the countryside is so wild, and even with all that weather there is something really romantic about that. And I grew up in the countryside, so I was always climbing trees or going off exploring with my brother or sister into the hills. So it did sort of have that romantic connection to my childhood.